Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife Julie. We are the Blended Life, and today and today we're talking about big feelings, how to navigate them, where they come from, what you can do about them. So it's gonna be good. Enjoy. Okay, let's just get into it. Big feelings. Big feelings. I know men don't usually talk about feelings. We love to talk about all of our feelings. You just display them. Externally? Your, yeah, but you don't talk about them. Why is that? I don't even know what that means. Like you guys will react with feelings, right? In anger or jealousy or if you're pissed or I think anger is the one feeling you guys all Why have. do you have to <laughs> stereotype us and put us in a box? <laughs> I have seen oh, so much anger please. and feelings come out of me, of course, but everyone <laughs> knows that, right? But that's okay to say about me. That's okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we kind of jump into this, Ow. I want to say happy anniversary. Hey, thanks to me. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Happy anniversary to you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yesterday we just celebrated our four year wedding anniversary yeah and that would be nine years together wow that is so. almost a decade and thanks to all of you who wished us a happy anniversary julie put it out there on social media some photos and stuff so if you guys haven't seen that go check out our instagram and our facebook and whatnot there's some photos on there yeah and nothing too risque i'm pretty <laughs> sure we're at dinner and you guys want to hear a quick funny story as we showed up to dinner and we show up to a nice restaurant at a, at a really beautiful ho hotel in our area and uh, we had been at, like, we do a little staycation thing. And uh, we got there, and we are kind of lounging around. We have hot tub in our room, like, a, you know, a huge hot tub. And so we're hanging out. And so I didn't get, like, 100% ready for dinner. I'm like, oh, I'm going to leave my nice dress shirt in the car, and I'll put it on on the way to dinner. So we get out there, and we get going. We're in the car. And I go to put on my nice dress shirt, <laughs> and I grabbed one of our son's <laughs> dress shirts. So it didn't even fit over my right arm. <laughs> <laughs> so I wore a T-shirt to our nice anniversary dinner last night. So if you guys see our photos on social media and wonder why I am wearing <laughs> just an average T-shirt. Is it why? Well, people aren't going to really see what we're wearing because it's kind of a, a selfie situation close up. Yeah, but you can tell I'm wearing a T-shirt. Like there's no collar. There's yeah. no, you know. But, you know, beach towns are kind of whatever anyway. I wasn't the only one underdressed there. No. But, it's a beach town. Yeah, but I, uh, you know. It, it really takes it out of you when you're like, here we are showing up. But yeah. they still recognize that it was our anniversary. And I f feel like they knew, like, you guys only want water tonight, right? You can't afford the rest. <laughs> it was kind of one of those vibes Here's at first. Here's a free dessert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really I'll show funny. her. I will give her a good tip and show her that we're not. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, our people. anniversary <laughs> was awesome. And Unless. I guess I kind of, I don't want to, I don't, we're going to talk about big feelings and what to do with your big feelings and how to navigate them. Um, but I don't want to forget to say this, and it, it goes with our anniversary. Eric and I are not <laughs> um, immune to big feelings. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had I a never, lot of. I never use big feelings. You can you, oh, okay. We have had big feelings. And. I will tell you, having an overnight away, just us with no kids, no, we didn't even really watch TV. We no, didn't. there were a lot of big feelings. <laughs> I'm just saying to get out, to change the scenery, to remove ourselves from yeah. daily life and the chaos that our kids and co-parenting or whatever it is and go reconnect is a really great way to break big feelings, like when you have big feelings, to just be able to to go do that, I, I think is a helpful tool. Well, and break the cycle of just your day in, day out, same routine of, you know, like you said, the kids and work and pets and obligations friends and just yeah. all the things, you know, we didn't have our phones in front of our faces the whole time. You know, it was it was just us hanging out. It wasn't a rule. I mean, like our phones came up a couple of times for random things, 
Um, but we had time to just spend with one another and talk and relax. And I think that's a, that's the big thing. Like we kind of relaxed and you're like, man, I'm really enjoying this being relaxed. And like for like the first few hours, I'm like, I don't know how to relax. (laughs) Like you kind of made fun of me a little bit because I'm sitting there and I'm like, are you bored? You're like, kind of, (laughs) yeah, I don't know what to do. Like I'm always doing, you know, I'm always going like always. And I fall asleep at night just to wake right back up and keep going. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was weird to just kind of sleep in wherever we want. It's like, what time do you want to get up? And you're like, I don't care. I'm like, well, I've never heard that before. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I to sleep in, I think it stressed me out a little bit. I woke up the first time with a headache and then I fell back asleep and I woke up the second time, a little bit more of a headache, fell back asleep and then woke up and I was like, wow, I feel good. <laughs> There's no stress. So that was a good thing. So thank you. You were able to relax though and get out of the yeah. anxiousness of yeah. nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it was nice, right? Yeah. Like the when you and I hung out in the beginning, mm-hmm. it kind of was reminiscent of that, mm-hmm. of being able to just be together. And, you know, this is before we lived together even, you know. And so when we hung out, it was very intentional and it was without kids and, and it was you know, free from work. And now, you know, when you're married and you're living together, everything is commingled and everything's intertwined and it's kind of really hard to break out of that. So if you're having big feelings and you're having, um, which everyone has, get out of it. Well, and we didn't, yeah. And by get away, you know, like I'm thinking as you're saying that, like we didn't go far away. We went 12, <laughs> we went 12 miles away. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful little resort, you know, here in a beach town, but that's not what made it special. We could have been in downtown Los Angeles. We could have been in we will downtown, soon. downtown Cincinnati. We uh, could have been, you know what I mean? We could have been anywhere. Yeah. And it, but that wasn't the point of where we were. It was that we had time to reconnect. So I think the lesson of this is Get yourself out of your element. Get yourself out of your house. Like, we we had no kids. We very well could have stayed home and had our own house to ourselves. Way better being out of our house. That wasn't, yeah, that wasn't the point of this. It was the point of us getting out of our element and just being one-on-one. That's right. And I think that something that, well, I told you this, so this isn't going to come as a surprise. However, I was reminded because I'm like, the last trip you and I took together for, like, a trip. Just us. Was our honeymoon. Right. Four years ago. And I'm trying to even think the last overnight thing we did was probably years ago. Like, I, I no, don't even, that's not true. When was it? We went to a wedding for one of my Oh, friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but you months, were busy. A few months like, ago. Like, that wasn't us. Really. Yeah, like, until after that. You were busy that. and yeah, doing but stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So, I guess my point is, is I was, I was reminded, you know, over the last couple of days, how important it is. You're reminded that you actually like this guy. I know. I was reminded <laughs> that, hey, I, I actually have a Yo, good time He's not as bad as I thought he was. I, I'm reminded, though, that it's really important to disconnect. And, like, we should be doing this every other month or every quarter, like, four times a year. Like, for an overnight. Not that we're taking a vacation or anything. But it's important to get away and go right. connect. Yeah. Yeah. We like each other a little bit better now. A little bit better. A little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Because we still have big feelings. Always. Always. Some of us more than others. So let's get into that. I think, okay, well, I think most of us, when we are experiencing big feelings, have the power to go home and blow shit up. Oh, yeah. You know? And I really think, and we, you know, I, there's this saying called speak, well, you know, speak your truth. It's a really big thing. And I was sitting there thinking about this episode and and what we were going to talk about. And I'm like, you know what? If we truly spoke our truth, sometimes we would end our marriage or end our family. Like sometimes I feel like I I teeter that border a little bit. Yeah, And I'm like, I need to rein this in a little bit because I don't hate her. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't think she hates me, but she's about to. So I need to really just like be careful what I say right now. <laughs> right. Because we know that if we truly spoke our truth, especially, I mean, I don't care if it's you, your co-parent, your child, your spouse, your stepchild. I mean, you really have the power to ruin relationships. And I, and I think that is really sad because a lot of people do that, right? Divorce rate of blended families 70 percent and it is because we allow these big feelings which 
feelings aren't right or wrong. They're just feelings. Well, it's interesting, too, as we go on through our relationship and we become more comfortable with one another and (laughs) apparently love one another more. Yeah, because now we fart in front of each other and stuff. Well. (laughs) That's that love. I, it just, it's amazing to me that if when we were first dating, <laughs> if yeah. we had these types of big feelings, wouldn't you go running for the hills? Oh. You know what I mean? Like the type of stuff that we do now to our spouses, and I know all of you can relate to this. Interesting. The things we say, the things we do, how we act. I mean, if I played back what I recorded from the time I started pressing record about 15 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago, <laughs> like you never would have acted like that in front of me the first time we hung out. How was I acting? You, I have some of the loudest burps on record. Oh. And, you were, and you're just being burping. funny. Yeah. You were burping, but it was like, <laughs> it was like straight up like belching, you know? And like, <laughs> like we all think it's funny. I'm not like, oh man, I would have ran for the hills. But it w- it's one of those things like we wouldn't have displayed that type of action in front of one another. Yeah. You know, we well, are more comfortable to be our true selves and yeah, speak and be, our truth yeah, and blow and shit be up. Honest. <laughs> yeah, be honest in front of one another. Mm. And I don't know how people, it, it, it's backwards. You know, it's like we should be authentic up front. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, how do people get to that point? You know, mm. it's just, I don't, it's just interesting, it's interesting to think about. Yeah. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm sure there's, some technologically advanced. Well, I think in the theory. beginning, everyone's on their best behavior. Yeah. And I think that's natural, right? Like when we're meeting someone for the first time, we really care what they think. If we want them to like us, we know we can't let crazy out. We know <laughs> we can't speak our truth. I want, we know. I want everyone to kind of call themselves out. And if you guys are watching this or like <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube or you're on a platform where you can comment, leave us a message, or even like a go on Instagram or something. Find Julie always posts like the thumbnail of what this one is, um, of what this this topic is. Mm-hmm. I want everyone to kind of call themselves out and, and tell us something that you do now in front of your spouse or significant other that you never would have done when prior you to started this. dating. When you started dating, oh man, you know. And I, 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 there's yeah. some, there's going to be some funny ones. I know some of you guys are like, oh, that is me. I never would have done this, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and that even makes me think like, and never mind just dating, but I think in the beginning too, you're always like your kids have to be on their best behavior and yeah. we're very like walking on eggshells with everyone and trying to make everyone like, we're so kid gloves in the beginning and then that shit just comes off and now it's like a free for all. Pretty and sure what those white sparkly gloves were those kids' gloves that Michael Jackson used okay, to have. Okay, stop. <laughs> um, and so I kind of be, you know, I I think about speak your truth, and as a life coach, I I do understand the importance of speaking your truth, right? I I do think that we need to be honest. You know, if you have needs and wants and desires, and you're not sharing them with your spouse, and you're expecting your spouse to be a mind reader. <laughs> I mean, you're forever going to be disappointed, right? And so I think there is a really important aspect to speaking your truth. But I think we forget the second part of that is speak your truth in love. You know, if you're doing that, if you're speaking your truth and being honest and you're like, my partner is someone I love instead of the enemy. Because sometimes when big feelings happen and we're speaking our truth, our partner all of the sudden is now the enemy and we are out for blood and we're going to blow shit up. We're going to tear shit down. And then it leads to the breakdown of a family because the marital unit is in distress. It's like us becoming childish again. I feel like I act differently in front of my parents than I did when I was a child. When you're a kid, you know, and like thinking about our kids right now, Mm. our kids act one way in front of us and then they act one way in front of friends parents like when they go somewhere else they're better behaved yeah Yeah. and it's like it's the child in this coming out you know um no i guess i don't act differently in front of my parents now (laughs) still childish (laughs) i'm like i I wasn't gonna call you out (laughs) i'm thinking about it coming off a really great weekend and i love you (laughs) and i'm like i don't want to okay Uh, you said it i'm glad yeah um so what are the biggest like when we're talking about big feelings, people might be like, well, what are, you know, the biggest ones in blended families? And here's what I came up with. And you can tell me like 
add to or whatever. Okay. The first thing that came up is anger. Oh, I think that anger is like the a, biggest big feeling that we we often have. I think anger is, isn't it like one of the top, like, it, um, for me, it's like top of the list. <laughs> it's like lead you with. You tell me you're angry every day. <laughs> lead with anger. <laughs> No, situations. I mean, you know, it's like everything and everyone <laughs> makes you angry. Yeah. But yeah. not truly. I mean, <laughs> I we joke about it. Like, am I really an angry person? Like, no, not at all. We joke about it, you know, because like I do. Do we? Uh, I talk. Yeah. I talk about <laughs> stuff a lot that I'm like, this is angry. Like, that makes me angry. But like at the end of the day, I'm not like if I walk outside the house, like all the neighbors are like, oh, he's all nice and happy and always sweet. I'm like, no, I'm angry. I'm That's not really funny. angry, but I am. I keep it I'm not, but I am. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm not bipolar. Are you? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Are you? <laughs> um, so anger, right? I think jealousy too. We get jealous a lot either of our stepkids, right? Because they have our spouse's attention or affection or whatever. We get jealous of, um, some people really get jealous of the ex and, um, you know, I, I have a client who brought up jealousy in the sense that she wasn't jealous of the ex, but really jealous that she was never going to have some of the experiences because they're all the first times seem to be gone. Yeah, but I mean, that is that's that's and a bummer. So, I mean, yeah, it's a bummer, but it's reality. And like it's we just can't, something to grieve, you know? Yeah, it is. But we also can't get hung up on that. You know, no, and I but guess I'm just saying it's a big emotion that you can come up against. And right. jealousy isn't just because your husband flirted or your wife flirted with someone else. It, and that was the first time they had ever done it. And you <laughs> wasn't with you. Okay. So jealousy <laughs> is, is a big emotion that can come out in a lot of different ways and, and be caused by a lot of different things. Um, guilt. I think guilt is a really big emotion that you can see guilt rearing its ugly head in how people parent their children, um, how they deal with an ex. You know, I have clients who, gosh, they're guilty about something with their ex, and so they're bending over backwards, and that causes problems in their marriage. Um, they're guilty about spending time with their spouse and, and not – giving 110% to their kids. Or you vice know. versa, spending so much time with their kids and, and that, not giving it. Yeah. Yeah. Guilt is a big emotion or a big feeling. Um, anxiety. Whew. This one, I mean, everyone, everything's on fire. Everything's of, of the utmost importance. Everything requires our attention. You know, I, I can't tell you how many people I talk to that just feel like there is nothing in my day I can get rid of. There is nothing in my day that I can say no to and create space for me. I have days like time. that. I have lots of days like that. I, I daily have, and I'll be at like shoots and I'll be like, man, I have a lot of anxiety built up today. Yeah. I, I've got like, because mm -hmm. I'm on like a tight time crunch, I have yeah. to get this shoot done, drive miles to get to this shoot to be right on time. And um, punctuality, you know, and, and integrity is like a huge part of, who I am in my, in my business and how I set up. So if I'm like, if I'm a minute late, I'm like sweating bullets, like driving, like there's no way I can be a minute late. Yeah. You know, so it builds anxiety. So it, it, yeah, it's, it's one of those that goes from anxiety to stress and then mm -hmm. just overcomes you. Well, and talk about, because this is a blended, blended family situation. You were really anxious and stressed out yesterday that had nothing to do with work because you were trying to figure out schedule well, like it like, was all it was all internal also because as we're talking about it on our way to out of town so I'm tell like, everyone what you were struggling with i'm like though. i got a headache and you're like why i'm like i'm just stressed out today <laughs> you're like you've had the easiest day it's our it's our anniversary. You have nothing. I've been chill. Like I haven't really. I know. You, I was yeah. chill all day, right? Yeah. And it was like totally internal because my son lives with us full time and he's always there and we're trying to go out of town. My parents live an hour and a half away who would have taken him, but we didn't set up for that. So he's going out to his friend's house who he rides with every weekend. They ride dirt bikes and they ride every weekend and he his friends at work with his dad doesn't get off till five o'clock we're trying to be at our hotel at four o'clock so we're i'm trying to get him to figure out all of his plans i've been trying this for days but you try to get a teenager to make plans and run them by you and that just doesn't happen so i'm trying to be on your schedule because you want to be there at four o'clock which i'm good with 
and then get him to his friend's house, which is about 45 minutes away because it's out in the middle of nowhere, like 1,800 acres of just dirt bike land. And I'm just stressed out because his plans aren't going right, which is affecting my plans, <laughs> which is I'm thinking going to affect you, and I don't want to make you mad or angry or give you big feelings. <laughs> so I'm trying not to have the big feelings, but internally I'm having the big feelings, and it's mm-hmm. causing stress and anxiety and a headache within me and i'm just i'm trying to make everything just go so you were the one having big feelings oh yeah but i i I feel like i do though because i want to please everyone around Mm. me like i want to keep you happy i don't want the kids to get upset or angry or have to deal with them you know so i feel like i take on a lot of burden like that um Mm. and no one asked me to no one's telling me i have to it's just a role that i've chosen to take on and i'm and and now that we've talked about it more i'm like man that's something i could probably let go of a little bit like yeah i'm a head of household but doesn't mean i have to take on all the burden in the household or or i think it's just um and this is just i used to be such a procrastinator my whole life until i was in charge of things like whether it be business or you know even getting divorced like trying to be in charge you know like you're on your own for that right nobody's like doing it for you (laughs) yeah you hope (laughs) but you know what I'm saying like there's just been so many things in my life where it was like I had to shift out of that procrastination to actually so this is a way you can navigate anxiety if you have anxiety around this stuff and I've just had to learn the hard way and now I'm such a planner because it really like things don't always go according to plan Right. right like that's not life But having a plan calms you down. And, you know, I think getting ahead of it, like I, like just having a plan, having it set up days before or a day before and not doing it. I just, my son, (laughs) I'm like, we just went, like, I'm trying to teach this to him because I texted him on Friday. Because he's with, I text. Thank you. He was supposed to take his, he's a junior and was going to take the SATs on Saturday and he's been with his father. And so I was the one like, you know, a month or two ago, I think in March, actually, I'd signed him up for this SAT test and him and I together and he printed, he had all the stuff and all the information. And so it's just like a mom, you know, I'm like texting him Friday. Don't forget tomorrow's SATs. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. And he was like, uh, what? What? Like, it was kind of like he, uh, last minute. And so then last minute, he's like, well, I don't have anything. I need my ticket. I need my, my the printout of the receipt. And I'm like, why do you not have that with you? This we've this has been planned forever. Like, this is something you've known, like, you know. Right, months in and advance. now we're trying to, and I have clients in the afternoon, and I'm trying to scramble and look through my email to see if I can email it to him because he's at his dad's house. And it's like, so trying to, you know, figure out, okay, so – I should have probably checked in with him before he left to his dad's house and made sure he had everything. I don't know. Like, I, you know what I mean? It's just a lot could be avoided by yeah. figuring out how to get ahead of this because it just is what it is. And as parents, we kind of have to lead that. And so I was mad at him because I felt, but you're right. Like he's a teenager and yeah. he's a boy. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he lives moment to moment. He doesn't. But it's going to, so I'm like, I I had to start thinking, and that was creating anxiety in me because I'm like, I don't have time for this right now. Like, like, it's tomorrow morning. Yeah. And it was just, it was a very anxious situation. And so reflecting back and being like, you know what? Like, I should have, you know, here's how I could have helped myself out because I'm the one that's anxious. Yeah. I, you know, and I kind of thought about that last, yesterday with that situation. I'm like, how could I have changed the situation? And I'm like, Really, the only way I could have changed that is just by not plan- planning on him to not go somewhere else. Because I gave him a couple days advance, and I and I had him plan yeah. that. And it really, like, the ball f- fell short with him and his friend. It, it's His friend. Two teenage <laughs> boys are trying to work yeah, this out. Yeah, yeah, and he's pretty good about stuff like this. If mm. I tell him to do stuff, you know. But he's relying on another teenage boy. He's relying on another teenage <laughs> boy, and he kind of called him out. Like, he, like uh, you know, yeah. he's kind of like. I think he's a little slow in this area. (laughs) Like he just does funny things, you know, and he showed me, he's like, dad, I've been trying like a couple of days. I'm like, man, I thought you got this worked out. I've been trying, look at the text. And I read the text and I'm like, yeah, you sure he's not in third grade? Like this, it was kind of wild, but anyways, it it all kind of, it came through. So, 
Yeah. So I'm thinking like just because I'm I'm no, I know so many people are listening to you and relating to this. Yeah. And so I'm like, how could we? You know, how could how like I think that. Could you have texted the dad and worked it out? Yeah, or you know could you have been like, if we don't know by Saturday or by this date, then I'm going to make other arrangements with right. an adult, whether it's mom you know, or it's funny. grandma. Like, his dad and I are like, we're buddies, you yeah. know, like we're buddy, buddy. But we don't text, like we don't have, I don't have his number on my phone. Oh. Which is odd. That is odd. And I'm like, I probably should. And I'm, and I'm sure he's got my number. Mm-hmm. I would assume he does. And mm-hmm. I'm like. Dang it. We're also kind of relying on these kids when they're riding 45 minutes outside of town. Like, he, the parents are there. But you should be able to contact someone. I should be able to contact them. Yeah. Um, and if I really, really needed to, I know how I could. I know their business address, and I and I know that they have a phone. But how much and, easier would it be just to not have to go through right, that? Right, right. And just be right. like, But I'm also like, number. dang, if, like, if he gets hurt out there riding, like... His phone ain't gonna be with him. I hope not to. I hope not to rely on his friend to get a hold of me. You no. know what I mean. So I'm like thinking about that this yeah. weekend. I'm like, you know what? I do need to make other arrangements. I do need to. I need to. Or just have like a time. Like let them try because I think it's good to let right. kids try to work stuff out for themselves. Oh, for but sure. But then like, here's a deadline. So if this isn't yeah. done by this deadline, then grandma or your mom. Yeah. Like we're gonna do something different. Yeah, and he's usually pretty good about this stuff. I mean. I, He's very independent. I've made yeah. him an independent kid when it comes to stuff like this and very But he's um, again relying self sufficient. But also he is a teenager. He still does need to be guided. That's and that's right. something as parents we need to remember that that's right. our children need to be guided. And just because we've told them once and we've showed them once or we've showed them twice or, or a we've thousand shown them times. a thousand times <laughs> doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect. That's right. But it's our job to set them up for the future. Right. And him and I just had a big talk about stuff like this. You know, it's it's really important that you start learning this stuff now, not at 18. Right. You know, in, in like work ethic and stuff like that. And he's like, well, I'm only 15. I don't need to. You know, all my friends aren't, you know, working and doing stuff like this and figuring stuff out right now. Why do I have to? It's like, listen, bud, I I, I understand this. But when you become 18, there isn't a magic switch that just, I'm 18 now. Like, I've got all the common sense and everything in the world. Yep. And I just know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. It, Exactly. So I'm like, you know what? Let's start getting you on that pathway when you have all the time in the world right now to work on that. Right. Work on that direction. Well, and to your, like, I, I love what you're saying because the point of how, how can we avoid, like anxiety is going to come, but if you struggle with it and you're feeling out of control, getting ahead of it with a plan is so amazing and I think that's exactly what you're saying is you want him to have a plan in place or a structure or something that he is going to be able to use and and tap into and utilize so he can avoid the anxiety that's going to come or avoid a big chunk of the anxiety that's going to come well and just knowing how to life like now what knowing how to navigate life that's right before it has to be navigated Knowing how having a plan, that's it. Just knowing how to take care of things and know what to do and how to think for yourself and do for yourself or find resources, any of it, you know, you know, it's our job as parents to guide our kids Mm -hmm. to this. And, you know, a lot of parents are like, Hey, my kids turn 18. They're out of here. Well, think about it. When your kids turn 18, are they prepared to be out of here? Have you prepared them to be out of here? And I ask myself this quite often, Mm -hmm. you know, like, if I die tomorrow in an airplane crash. Stop. <laughs> Dear Lord. Is my kid going to be able to survive? And I do my best to plan him, you know, p- plan for him and and guide him to be able to be self-sufficient. Now, I don't require him to be on a day-to-day basis, but we are working towards that yeah. every single day. Yeah. You're you're a great great father. Thanks. I'm not a great uh, like like a great grandfather? Yeah. That's you're a great a great, great, great grandfather. Thank you. So, anxiety. Um we're talking about the big feelings, the the top ones. I, uh, sadness, sadness and grief, right? That was, is a big I was, feeling. Uh, that was in my mind when you were reading these off. I wonder if she has sadness in here because mm. one of your biggest feelings is sadness. And we'll get into that. Thanks in a moment. for telling me how I feel. <laughs> you tell me how you feel, and it and it just it <laughs> goes from head to toe. And it used yeah. to be a big one of your biggest sadness moments. Used to be like when 
your kids were at the other house when they were young and the kids were gone. And it's like when the kids were gone at the, from the house, you were so sad. And so just when they were little, right? When they were when little, I, they were now cute. you don't care. Now you're like, <laughs> now they're opposite. teenagers. And I'm like, yes, peace. Yeah. It's even written on the calendar when they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Interesting though. You're right. Sadness is a big feeling and sadness, man. Um, it's different than anger. Obviously you won't know that, but anger kind of like, we know anger destroys connection. If we act and react with anger and out of anger, but I, I don't think we really, and Eric's always told me this, so I've been able to connect these dots, but sadness can really be hard on relationships too. I mean, I, like Eric would say, it was a struggle in our marriage for a while because I was happy when the kids were home. And then when the kids were away, I was like heartbroken, right? Because you don't get used to missing your children when and they're gone. missing out on, in our case, 50% of their lives. Like, yeah, like you don't know what's happening. Like they're having experiences and they're having, they're doing life and you're not a witnessing it and you're not affecting it and you're not like, it's so the weirdest thing. And you all know if you know what that's like. And so it would produce sadness. And then our, the time that we were alone... You're sad. You know, I was sad and that was really a missed opportunity to connect with my husband, to have be grateful for the time that we were together. And it, you know, I can't imagine that was easy for you. Well, I feel like I'm going to get hate mail for this because people are going to be like, well, I miss my kids too. Like, yeah, we all miss our kids. But the reality of it is our kids are probably doing well. Our, prob- our kids are probably having a great time at the other house. The other parent probably misses the kid and feels sad. When they're not there. Absolutely. Right. But the big picture of it is if you're sad when the kids are gone and you're happy when the kids are home, well, you're only happy when the kids are home. We aren't really connecting as much when the kids are home because you're spending a lot of time with the kids. We're not spending one-on-one time together. We might be spending family time together, and that's good because you're happy for that. But then the kids are gone and you're not so happy and that's our one-on-one time. So that made me feel like, what am I doing wrong? You know, mm. like in hindsight, like I'm thinking back about it and how was I feeling in those situations? And I'm, I'm thinking like, am I doing something? Mm. Am I doing something to make her sad? Am I doing something? Why am I not able to make her happy? Why am I not able to cheer her up? Why am I know? not enough? Right? Like, why am I not enough to be? Yeah stoked to be around and yeah yeah I get and at the end of the day it had nothing to do with me it wasn't me whatsoever Mm. well you said a lot there because something that's really interesting and something that will help marriages is to understand that a lot of times big feelings have nothing to do with you like your significant other's big feelings have nothing to do with you your kids big feelings have nothing to do with you we give ourselves way too much credit, <laughs> way too much importance. <laughs> right. I mean, sometimes your spouse will fuck up and be like, oh, you have big is. feelings and they're towards directly towards your spouse. Right. But a lot of your big feelings are rooted in fear. Number one. And fear is all about you, not the other person. You're afraid the other person's going to leave. You're afraid your kids won't love you and they're going to move on. You're afraid your co-parent is going to talk shit and turn heads and and ruin your life you're afraid you know and so a lot of these big feelings are rooted in fear and that is about you and so I think it's good perspective to have when you're dealing with your spouse who's having big feelings is to create space for the possibility that it's not about you because we get really offended when our significant other has big feelings right this is something we struggle with all the time it has nothing to do with either of us we get we get offended when we're dealing with microscopic feelings that don't mean anything we get offended when there's no feelings (laughs) (laughs) so um that's it i wanted to say jealousy guilt anxiety anger sadness do you have any you want to add to the list no sadness though i think is just a big one that is uh, is overlooked probably i'm sure a lot of us do feel sadness and that seeps out and plays out as probably a form of depression sometimes oh a lot of times where i ask myself i'm like am i depressed and then that bipolarness kicks in and i'm like no i'm no i'm doing good i'm doing great (laughs) no not really but 
sadness is one of those things that really can take you down and make you feel down and affect everyone around oh. you. Anger is one of those that is very quickly recognized. Anger is contagious. Anger is, and it's just quickly it's recognized. Really you know if dad's angry. You know if mom's angry. You know, and it because it, mm. it's just it's so loud and abrupt and in your face. But sadness is withdrawn. Cre- it's and withdrawn. Creeps into the corners. No one sees it. Usually is alone. And it's harder to show sadness. Someone who really has to be tuned into your feelings to recognize it. And sadness is different because when you're angry, you're vulnerable as shit. You're, you're like really happy to say why you're angry. Sadness is one of those things that vulnerability is a little bit more difficult when you're sad. So to be able to talk about it can feel worse, you know, or can feel embarrassing or you don't like it. What's not helpful when someone's sad is for them to tell you not to be sad or you shouldn't be sad. Same with anger, right? Right. <laughs> Why are you angry? You shouldn't be angry. And then you're like, oh, I'm, re- I'm really <laughs> angry. Kill yeah. you, you know, like it gets. Um, and so let's, what I want to do is I want to talk really quick about the causes because when I say it's not about you, what are the causes then of, of these big feelings. I think they're rooted in fear. But Before we even get into that, I feel like I want to give you a quick shout out, a quick plug, which everyone knows by now. But as oh, as a health and life coach for yes. blended family and step parents, you can help people identify these, right? Oh. Uh, and, yeah. and, I, and, and, and I know it's like, like, oh, he's set up for this. I'm, I didn't, we don't pre-rehearse any of this. But I'm asking myself as we go, like, What is, how do we solve this? How do I get better at my big feelings? How do I get better at controlling my anger or controlling my sadness or my depression or um, just all these feelings that we just mentioned? I can tell you right now how. You can? I can. Without even having to call in and get a free breakthrough session. Breakthrough session. That's right. If you guys want to (laughs) know, becoming heard now at gmail.com, contact Julie. But she's about to give us some free examples, anyways. Yeah. I think that a really great, um, it's really all about habit change Okay. because feelings are going to come. You can't really help that, right? Feelings are going to come. What you do with them is what burns shit down. And so if you have a big feeling and your habit is to be critical or you have a habit of criticism, um, of condemning someone or your, your go-to when you're angry is I'm going to yell or I'm going to blame, I'm going to be the victim. You know, when I'm sad, I'm going to isolate. Like how we use our emotions to like how they affect our behavior is habit. So if you can change your habit around your emotions, it's very different. And then you can kind of like let your emotions go and you don't have to behave in a way that will ruin relationships. And that's kind of the work I, well, not kind of, that is the work I do so around you train, So feelings. you train people like how to Well, do it's just too. habit change. Yeah, we yeah. talk about habit change so you can transform your life Yeah, in any area, health or life, like whatever you're wanting to, if you want to do something different, you have to become someone, you, you know, if you want a different life, you have to become someone you've never been before. And how do you do that? It's all through habit change. So you can email me. I'm offering right now free breakthrough session for new people who I've never spoken with before. Um, it's 60 to 90 minutes is usually the time. And you can email me at becomingheardnow at gmail.com and I can send you more information about life coaching and a link where you can book your free breakthrough session. And I, I know I bring this up a lot, mm-hmm. but I, the reason that I do is because I've seen so much positivity come out. I've seen so many clients, I mm-hmm. heard the story, seen all, I'm the one that usually gets all the emails that come through and then I forward them on to you. Mm-hmm. And I've just seen so much just joy and um, happiness and gratefulness of how much you have helped people yeah. change their lives in such a short span of time. I mean, just a few months of time and all of a sudden it's like yeah. they're thanking you. And I'm just like, I kind of, I've never sat in and like watch and I don't think I could. Could I? I mean, no. I, not that I'm going to. I'm <laughs> like, that's like client no, no I mean you'd have to get privilege from you'd the have from the client from the yeah, client. I'm not, yeah 
but I'm like, man, I really like, I'm intrigued at what you do because everyone has been just so happy and so grateful. So, yeah. Well, um, and I'm curious and you, I, again, don't flatter me. Or <laughs> I don't flatter, flatter you. I'm I sorry. I'll, I, I'll try. No, harder. but I'm just saying like, <laughs> I feel like as I've been on this journey as a coach, it's transformed me a lot from who I used to be and who I yeah. am now that I've gone through school and, you know, it's interesting because the things that I teach and I, I apply in my own life. So I firsthand know about, I'm a person of big feelings all the time. That's just how I was born. I'm wired that way. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And so learning myself how to, like yesterday, I could have been super anxious and demanding and upset and annoyed. And I was just like chill you know like I could have I could and I think the old me would have been like putting pressure on you and I'm like and I was like really upset like not upset but I was annoyed that you were stressed over me at all because I'm like I'm putting in so much effort like I'm being the most (laughs) chill like I'm that's I doing nothing I think that's a big part of it I think is because I'm used to the old you in previous years yeah it would have been a thing it would have been a thing and I think I I'm not used to you just not reacting to it. And I'm also like, and I just got to get my mind straight on it. Is she just ramping up and it's just going (laughs) to snap all of a sudden if this doesn't go right. But no, I'm like, you have changed. So you are practicing. Do you, well, do you feel like that? I do a hundred percent all the time. I mean, I'm not perfect. I am more by you doing what, like practicing what you're teaching. I am more confident in our marriage now than I was say one year ago. Mm. I am more confident that our relationship and our marriage is going to last and go further and be stronger now than I am one year ago. Yeah. You know, just because not only uh, it it helps me too, but just who you are and how you show Mm. up. And that's because you're doing what you're teaching these people to do. Yeah. Well, and I want to ask you this because I think this is the point of habit change and I wa- I'm hope this is the hope and and so let me ask you this. Okay. Big feelings when we're experiencing our our significant other and they're having lots of big feelings all the time, which was me. Right? right? Big feelings all the time. Um And you're not perfect yet, so you need to keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> um Sorry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Um, but I'm just teasing you. No, it's fine. But what I'm wh- so what I'm trying to say is, if you can kind of stop doing the highs and lows right. of big feelings, it kind of makes the other into your like. I think what you're trying to say is you're more confident that our marriage is going to go the distance now more than ever. But I want to point out that really you probably just feel safer with me for sure. I and do, I and not that, that I never did before. Like I've always been confident in our marriage. Uh, but it, you feel in, safe, in our relationship. right? Safer. But I feel I feel safer. Yeah. I feel point. like I see the effort being put in by you and I see where you've been working on things and I know I probably don't see all of it. I don't see what everything that goes on behind the scenes. Clearly you didn't yesterday. But <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But I recognize it. Yeah. Well, I, it, was, it was so cool. Like I have to also point out is by by me being calm and just being chill and like no expectations like I'm just grateful we're like be grateful we're getting away like that was my my thing was like sorry there's a little thing flying around um but I was just trying to be grateful that we were ha- like that was the attitude I was trying to adapt like I'm I'm just grateful we're doing this we haven't been anywhere my husband has worked really hard so that we can have an overnight away and I'm just going to be grateful for whatever happens and what I love about that for me is that you came to me and said listen if you, if I can't get to the hotel cuz I did I wanted for me <laughs> to go idea. early yeah. Yeah. and like I wanted to enjoy it like I was going to lay by the pool maybe or get in the hot tub in our room like I wanted to go enjoy it and I just was chill All I hear is me 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 I did Well that's <laughs> what I wanted Right yeah How do I know what you want if you don't tell me uh, That's it So but what I love about this is that you said without any prompting Mm -hmm. like if you want to get there at a certain time 
like, and you weren't mad or being a dick, right? You were no, just being I was like, su- yeah, you were being like super, like you go and how, like, and I'll, I'll meet, you, meet there. you there. Yeah, I, and I and I'll be shortly. And that's exactly. I was like, yeah, I'll be right behind you. Right, and I was good with that. Like yeah. there was no. Yeah. And it was so beautiful. Thank you. Like I just, oh, but oh, you know what I yeah. mean? Like the outcome of just being like it paid off. Yeah, it was just like confidence, and then it all right. worked out. It all worked in the end, right? Yeah. So um, let's talk about how you can reframe these because I think we we get really down and we get stuck in big feelings because we get disappointed about it, our spouse's big feelings or we're disappointed in ourselves and we kind of feel stuck when we have big feelings. And so one of the ways you can navigate big feelings or get unstuck is a thing called reframing. And so reframing is really just bringing gratitude or appreciation to the feeling that's taking over instead of like being at war with yourself or annoyed and pissed off at your significant other for their big feeling, which, you know, is not helpful. So let's do a couple reframes. Okay. Do you know what that, like, you'll see as I go. Ready? So the first one is jealousy. How can you reframe jealousy? Well, Jealousy sometimes can motivate you to work harder. And you see this. <laughs> is, that what you, is this a mind game that you're doing to me? It's not. It's oh. just a reframe. Like, so instead of being angry at jealous, anger at jealous, like instead of being upset that you're jealous or your significant other is jealous, understand that maybe it'll spark motivation to do better or to try harder, which I think, you know, we can, we can understand this, this is- in like, if you're in jealousy is stupid, but if you're going to have this emotion, use it for good. So if you're jealous that somebody owns their own business and they have a lifestyle that you are, you know, wanting for yourself, you know, maybe it pushes you to like be an entrepreneur and start your own business and st- you know, like allow it to, to put you in I've a better direction. I've always in the past direction. taken haters like this. Like if someone is like, doesn't like me for some reason or has a problem with me. And I haven't had these issues for a long time, but I just had this conversation with my son Mm. two nights ago Yeah, at 3 a.m. for like an hour and a half. (laughs) Mm. And this was kind of part of our conversation. Yeah, There's someone that's like hating on him literally for no reason and kind of just jealous of his talents and stuff he's capable of doing. And I stopped him and I said, are you going to get mad at him and like, trash talk back and just get sucked down into this just Mm -hmm. dirty rabbit hole of just hatefulness or use this to spark something under you and do better. Do better. Like, you know what? You want to hate on me? Like, then catch me. Like, here we go. Um, But I think a lot of us, if we can reframe, is that word? We can reframe our actions and the way that we handle things. That's how it change. Yeah. Rather than Mm -hmm. coming out with, Hate and anger, like combi- like like putting giving it back what you're getting. Yeah, which is yeah. just super unproductive. It keeps it does, you stuck in a cycle. It does nothing. That's right. It does nothing for you. Does nothing for them. Not that you care about them. It does nothing for anyone around you're you. Just contributing negativity. Yeah, it just it sucks you down. But yes. if you can use that to to, s- to spark, spark that fire and yes. just in, and build up and build off of that, right. like I don't know. So my long story short was like. Use this to to better yourself. That's you right. Know? You don't get places in life by buying things. You don't get places in life by hating on people or talking about things. You get places in life by practicing and doing action, and right? Actions. That's right. And that's a hundred percent of where it gets you. Mm-hmm. And all the people that don't like you or dislike you or want to trash talk you or your ex, you know, mm-hmm. like. Never mind them. That's right. And if you are going to mind them, use them to learn and do better and get further. Right. So no, absolutely. Um, another let's let's talk about guilt. And instead of be spending and you're wasting your energy on feeling guilty, especially about something you can't change, right? It's done. Can you allow guilt to? spark um a fire to change a negative behavior like see it as an opportunity to learn about yourself something that you can grow in 
something that you can be better at. And I think this is kind of what it's going to come down to. Can you allow these big feelings to make you better? Can you look at yourself when you have a big feeling, like the big feeling of guilt, and kind of use it as a moral compass to be like, "Mm, where do I need to go true north? Like, what is my true north? And that's not how I behaved. So I know now the direction I need to go. And that's a win. As weird as that sounds, yeah, you know, but guilt is a useless big emotion. Because no, but a lot of people try to use it, and we've all heard the term guilt trip. And people try to guilt people into things and get them to feel a big emotion in order to manipulate To get them, what they want. To yeah. get what they want. And at the end of the day, it's like you're creating this problem that usually gets overlooked mm-hmm. and figured out later, and it just creates bigger problems. Yeah, so reframe guilt into figuring out how you can grow and be better. Anxiety, right? Anxiety can be used to problem solve in a new way, right? So we feel anxiety usually when we're out of control. And kind of, we talked about this earlier on in this podcast, like, you know, feeling anxious and then using that as a tool to be like, well, how could I have done this differently to avoid Anxiety, which just really means like being creative, like and figuring out a new way to approach a problem or a new way to do life so that this emotion can be avoided, which just levels you up. Right. right? Um, anger. How can we bring appreciation and reframe anger? Are you going to give me a gold star? No. Oh, you could bring appreciation and bring a gold star. Okay. So anger, I think, can be a to like, um, when you're feeling angry, it kind of forces you to calm yourself down, right? And get in a calm place. And that's a good thing. Right. You know, so anger can inspire understanding, you know, instead of being angry about a situation, the way to diffuse anger is really just having some compassion and understanding to a circumstance where they, you know, or it it lets you flex your faith muscles if you're a Christian, right? Right. A lot of times we're angry at people and we're supposed to love them and we're supposed to find compassion and understanding. And so anger can kind of trigger you into compassion. That's really awesome. Yeah. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out, like, I'm never angry for long at all, right? No. Have you ever seen me angry for, like, what's the longest you've ever seen me angry? You, like, (laughs) usually the next day you're fine. Yeah, but usually it's, like, within, like, as long as it's, like, in the daytime, I'm not angry. You let go pretty quickly. Like, like within minutes sometimes. Yeah. 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 Bipolar. Am I truly angry then? Or bipolar. Or bipolar. (laughs) I guess Jerry's out. (laughs) I'm angry. No, I'm fine. (laughs) I get whiplash. Now, usually once the situation is left, Mm. I'm usually all right again. Yeah. Where did it go? Sadness. Yeah. At sadness, like I said before, it's a big one. So, sadness can alert you to have a more... Focused attention, right? It's so a, it's a more vulnerable one. Yeah, and so sadness can be an opportunity for vulnerability to focus your attention somewhere else. What? <laughs> what was that? Vulnerability. Okay. Is that not what I said? Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So I think reframing big feelings helps. And I, I, sorry, I was supposed to talk about this earlier, but where, where, what causes these big feelings other than fear? So the top three I came up with. And this is, again, just to help understanding. If you can bring understanding and compassion into big feelings, you can kind of ease off the emotion and you don't have to burn shit down, right? So um, understanding if there's a conflict in relationship, obviously a big emotion is to follow. Big emotions don't help conflict though, right? right? And so when you're realizing your big emotion is due to a conflict, You can kind of try to then narrow it down what's causing the conflict and deal with that and kind of put your emotion to the side and deal with that later. Like if we can compartmentalize our, like put our emotion, not that we can't let it out later or deal with it later, but really being able to understand it's probably just the conflict that we're experiencing and what's causing the conflict. That's way more helpful than just reacting out of like anger. Right. Um, Unmet needs is a really big cause of big feelings in relationships. And you see this at work, right? You have an unmet need of um, to be valued at work. And you, your value is 
in relationship to the amount of money you make. And so if you're not having a, an unmet need at work with your with value and pay, you will quit your job or you will ask for more money or something's got to give eventually, right? And so no different in marriage, you know, when you're having an unmet need and where we, but in marriage, we expect everyone to be mind readers. Right. Like you're supposed to suss out my need. And if you don't, then you're an asshole. Okay. Like, I think that's how people do relationships sometimes right. though. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the third thing is just having inadequate coping skills, right? Like we, when we're kids, we act like we're children, which I think is what your point was earlier. Like, our coping skill as a child when we have big feelings is to throw ourselves on the floor and have a tantrum. I'm going to try that. Well, I have not done that in <laughs> as long as I can remember. I think I'm going to try that. Feelings need action. And so we react. And when we're little kids, like people will ask me, like, I don't understand why my toddler's flailing around on the floor. Well, they're having a big feeling that's important to them. And not to you. And they don't know how they have no coping skills. All they know how to do is to throw themselves on the floor and flail around. Is that what that little girl after lunch, <laughs> was she having a big feeling in the middle of Maybe. the beach? She could have been pissed. She, I don't want to go. No, this poor little girl. We're walking down the beach. We just got off the pier. And she's walking. She trips and falls like flat to her face. <laughs> And the mom looks down at her and goes, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, your kid just fell on her face. Anyways, I laughed and walked by. Okay. So I think that understanding where your big feelings are coming from is really important. And then it helps you navigate them a little bit better. Um, a big, let's talk about how to, what will help you with big feelings. I think the first thing is always gratitude. If you're angry, you can figure out, Mm, what can I be grateful for right now? You know, anxious. You try that when you're angry. I have. <laughs> have you? Yes. I figure it out later after the fact. But luckily. in the But if you don't want to be angry. Oh. If you usually like, I wanna, when I'm angry, I usually want to be angry. Yes, I would agree. It feels good. Yes. <laughs> feels good. You're like, oh, I'm powerful. It's the only time people hear and see me. Except for on this podcast. My eyes are thank rolling you, around on listening. the floor right Thank now. you for listening to me. I feel okay. heard right now. Thank you. I'm just, I'm hey, quiet. I'm talking to our listener right now. Our I'm just, listener. I'm li the yeah. one person who listens Thank to you. Thank you for listening and hearing me right now. So if you can bring gratitude to your life and listen, there's always something to be grateful for. It'll calm you down. It'll put things into perspective and you can be rid of your big feelings a lot faster and save your family. Um, I think another thing to consider when you're having big feelings and you can tell me what you think of this is like you, you can either react or you can respond. And those are two very different things, right? Reacting is thoughtless and it is just, it is careless, you know, but responding, you have to actually pause before you respond. You have to know what you're going to say. You have to know how you're going to react. You have to know what you're going to do. And I think responding with big feelings is much um <laughs> much better, but much more fruitful, you'll get a lot farther than if you're just reacting. Do well, you and agree? people, yeah, people will hear you and they, it, it brings a tone down. And once it brings that tone down, you're able to communicate and yeah. get on the same level. Yeah. Versus reacting, you know, and, and lashing back, it usually escalates the situation. Yeah. So true. Um, I was at, our church had like, um, it's, you know, May or is it May or I think May was mental health awareness month. Okay. Was it May? It had to have been. It could have been. It, I think it was May. Anyway, our church had like a mental health awareness night where we, um, went and we had the presentation and just learned about mental health. And yeah. then each table had a licensed therapist at the table and we had discussion and we got to ask questions just to bring understanding to like mental illness. And if you have a family member struggling with it, how you can be useful. It was really, really good. So one of the things the therapist said is that, you know, when we're talking about emotions and dealing with people with emotions, that being able to label the emotion will naturally calm you down on the spot. 
So usually when we're angry, we just right. react and we're showing everyone we're angry with our attitude, with our eyes, with our words, with our tone. But we never really just stop to say, Eric, I'm angry. Hmm. And so the therapist was like, it's really interesting. I identify being angry quite often in the car, I believe. I, I let you know. Maybe that's why you get over it really fast. Maybe. Because I identify with it. Maybe. You do say you're we angry talk, all we the time. We talk it out. But I'm just saying, so this is something you can try. You know, if you're really angry at your spouse, instead of just spewing venom on them, you can let them know, I'm really angry right now. I'm really sad right now. I'm really anxious right now. And just verbalizing that will help calm you down on the spot. Um, Look for the smallest possible barrier, not the biggest, not look at the big problem. So this was another piece of advice that therapist gave us at the table when we're talking about emotions. Like if we're angry, we're angry at the big picture, right? The biggest thing that we could be angry about. And we're not looking at the smallest barrier to get... To help that situation. Well, a lot of times we have tunnel vision on the situation. We're Mm. just, we're pinpointing and just tunnel vision on what's making us angry. Like you said, versus the big picture. Yeah. Um, Something that came up is we feel like we're righteous. We have righteous anger or we're angry at someone. And really it has nothing to do about that person and more about us. And it was interesting because somebody posed the question, like maybe God's working on you right now. And not anyone else. Right. You know, and maybe mm-hmm. something's... And I think that's good perspective to have, too, because we just feel like we're going to take it out on everyone else. I don't even think that's a maybe question. I, I feel like he's always working on us. He's always working on me. He's always working on you. Yeah. He's just, always working on you. Just some, <laughs> some of us a little more than others. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing before we close out I want to bring up is, you know, a really useful mindset to have is change what you can and let go of what you can't and I know there's a lot of like we know that logically but that's a practice and when you start practicing that like you know if you can habit change and you can change the way you're doing things that's great some things in life you know we can't change other people we cannot change how our exes are going to treat us. We can't change how our children, our stepchildren are going to react or behave. We can't change our spouse, right? And so if we can't change something, let it go and change what you can. Well, and what pe- can we change? Ourselves. Yeah. But people are going to say, well, I'm not the problem they are, right? This is what I get all the time when I say this. However, your power, and this is something I always tell everyone in my breakthrough session for life coaching is like, listen, you can't change other people, but what your power is, is when you change, when you change, your relationships are forced to shift. And that is your power. So you might not be able to change everyone else, but if you show up differently and you have, you're showing up differently everything around you is forced to shift. You can't change and have things remain the same. And that's your power. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've seen it make sense. And that's incredible. Yeah. Becoming heard now at gmail.com. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening. I yeah. hope this episode of big feelings helps you. If you have questions or whatever, reach out. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. We will see you. No, we'll talk to you on the next one or we'll see you. Check us out on YouTube, you guys. If you're not watching us, we're, every episode that we put out is on YouTube. So go subscribe to us. Ring that notification bell and keep watching us. Follow us on all the socials. You'll get updates on what we're doing. If yeah. you guys have a topic, you I also feel like we should yeah. say this. If you have a topic you want us to talk about or you want... You're struggling with? Let us know. We oftentimes take into consideration what you guys want and do episodes accordingly. Well, so. And just quickly, we are not proclaiming to be professionals on this but we are the ones that start conversations in your house that's the point of blended life is to get you thinking about and talking about this type of stuff in your household and working on it in your own ways and it's just we're community based and hopefully this helps you this certainly helps us you know we i came into this topic sometimes today. it's <laughs> the only time we talk 
that's not true, but <laughs> it definitely helps us talk and hopefully it helps you guys talk. So yeah. if there's, if there's something you're struggling with or you want to talk about or want us to talk about, it helps us too. This isn't just like, you know, this is a community thing. So we appreciate you guys being here and thank you for being here with us. Yeah. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.